what you would do here is just uh, measure across um, and then just mark. You have to mark on all four, so all four sides. You have to mark at one, two, three, four. So do every side. Oh, I haven't done this side yet. So you just mark, mark at your one, one, two, three, and four, and then once you do that, you've got um, your you've got your little like tick marks on all four sides, and then you just and then you just draw across and connect the dots to make your grid lines. Um, if you measure the paper and you find that it's not exactly five inches by five inches, I apologize for that. When cutting large amounts of paper um, at once, sometimes uh, the paper cutter kind of pushes the paper a little bit off center and then some of the pieces are not exactly the right size. So if, you, if, that, if that bothers you um, and you wanna cut your own, you can certainly do that. So the acrylics, because they tend to be very stubborn paints, as we talked about last time, and they won't come out of clothing and brushes, um, and it's hard to clean the tables, as somebody mentioned also. Um, so I've got some newsprint paper here. Um, it's on the table with the palette knives and the brushes. So if you want to use a backing sheet um, to catch the mess, because you're going to be painting off the edges on this, then um, you know that's something you can, you can use too. All right. You're going to use one color which you can, you know, it can be anything you want. Um, I'm just gonna use something straight from the tube, but feel free to mix something if you want to. And then you're also gonna need some white. Which, the white is in tubes, just cause I don't happen to have any bottles of white paint. And then you're gonna need some black. Um, this white paint is a lot, um, it's really, really thick, um, and it tends to, you don't really need a lot, I'm noticing, it's, it's like, I think it's a lot more concentrated than the paint that's in the bottles, I think it's a little bit higher quality, actually. So, you're going to start by applying... color to one of the corners. I'm, I'm just, it doesn't matter which corner. I'm just going to use the top left. And then one of the corners is going to be white. And I know it's white paint on white paper, but you, there really is a difference. You can see the difference. And like, just as a rule, like when you're painting, even if you have an area that is gonna, well, unless you're working with watercolor, I take that back. With the exception of watercolor, if you're working in tempera or oil or, or um, acrylic, and you have an area of the paper that's white, you should always paint it anyway, because you're gonna see the paper. The paper doesn't really, it doesn't really feel like it's finished. So even if it's pure white um, and you're working with acrylic or oil or tempera, go ahead and fill it in. All right, one of the, one of the squares is gonna be gray. And how gray is gray, you might be thinking. I'm gonna go, I'm going for a middle gray here. You can kind of use, if you're working on the gray palette paper, you can kind of use the, you can sort of try to match the um, palette paper with your color. So see if you can get the value to be approximately close. Like you can see right there that the gray that I've made is pretty close in value to the paper. It's a different gray obviously, right? Can you guys see the difference here? See, the palette paper is more of a warmer gray, and the paint itself is much more of a cooler gray, and that just has to do with the black that we're using. So the brand of paint, the type of pigment that, um, that Blick uses for their, for their black is a, very much a cool 
Uh, it's a cool tone. So I'm getting a cool gray versus a warm gray of that palette paper, but it's pretty close in value, so I'm gonna go with that. All right, so then you're gonna paint one of these squares gray, and this, paint, this brush is way too small. And I don't have water for this. Um, don't use water or try not to use water for this first act, uh, activity. Um, if you need a little bit just to push the paint along, then you could use it like very sparingly, but try not to use water for this because it's, if you use too much water, it's gonna, um, it's gonna make it streak. And then also um, you're gonna be using water for the second one. All right, and then the fourth square is gonna be black. So I'm gonna use my gray brush to mix the black. Notice I did the white first, and then I did the gray, and then now I'm gonna do the black because I can use the same brush for those because the white, I'm gonna, you know, if you start with a clean brush, the white's gonna be fine. Then you can add black and that's gonna turn gray. And now I'm gonna mix with the same brush, I'm gonna mix, mix into the black and then I'm not gonna get any of that gray because the black is pretty overpowering. So. So now I'm gonna fill that square in black. All right, so far so good. Everyone with me? All right, cool. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna to start to um, make uh, the transitions between these squares, okay? And I would start with the outsides. So you're gonna blend the red with the white over a course of three squares. You're gonna blend the white with the black over the course of three squares the black with the gray over the course of three squares, and then the gray with the red. So um, it's helpful to have um, your colors that you've mixed on the palette. Um, you know, keep those, pal those, like when you mix the gray, and keep that gray around because you're gonna be using that. All right, and then eventually I'm gonna fill in this hole. I'm gonna go and fill in this, this whole thing. It gets kind of fun in the center here. When, when I say fun, it get, when it, it, maybe I may, more mean challenging because you start to have to combine. All right, so now, you know, it's a, like this square is gonna be a combination of whatever this one and this one are, right? And then this square becomes a combination of whatever this one and this one are. So it starts to get really, um, you know, it starts to like play around a lot with color and color relationships in that middle part. Um, and so then um, it's really good color mixing exercise. Um, all right, so that's the first one. Uh, there is a second one, but I'm not gonna demo that one now. I'll do it maybe later on in class if we have time. And if we don't ha get to it today, we'll just do it on Tuesday or Monday, so. All right, any questions about the exercise? All right, does that work for you guys? Make sense? All right, so um, I'll, I'm gonna edit this video and I'll post it in case people need a review.